got to wait for the sweet spot in the music. That's when we come on. Hey. hey oh, It's Aaron and Steve. Time for some real talk here on Steve Shetler Media. Got pastor and author Aaron M. Fleming. I like to throw the M in because that's you have a page, a Facebook page, that people can go find you and hit the like. That's true, Steve, and I've got a Amazon page where you can find my novels if you want. But enough, uh, enough self promotion <laughs> for the moment. Uh, we're here for real talk. Yes, we are, and and we've got we've got a pretty real conversation to have with you today, Steve, and I've planned this out a little bit, um, so it'll be a free flowing conversation about healing, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Many of you out there, maybe even all of you, I would guess, at one time or another, even if you're not a real religious person, there's a good chance that at some point in your life, you've said, God, would you please heal my grandma or my son um, or even even my pet? Uh, probably sure. a lot of us have prayed for our pets. Yeah. Or even our cars. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't know uh, if you've noticed this, Steve, but... Not every time that I pray for somebody to get healed, do they get healed? Yeah, that happens. So and it's a tough it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes. It it's a tough pill to swallow uh, when we see someone we love suffering, and um, maybe we've read in the Bible that God heals. Uh, we've been taught in church possibly that God still heals today. Mm-hmm. Um, we've read some of those passages. Uh, By his wounds we are healed would be a classic one. Sure. Um, the list of spiritual gifts in the in the Bible includes various gifts of healing, and so we wonder uh, what where where is God and what's what's God doing in these painful moments in life. And um, if you wouldn't mind, Steve, you kind of brought this subject up because it's yeah near and dear to your heart would you kind of tell everybody what kicked this off yeah you know the last the last few years in my family's life we've uh we dealt with my dad getting alzheimer's and then passing away from some complications and yeah so i was like you know why why didn't god heal my dad uh, I mean, he was a good Christian man, uh, was was a man of faith, you know, attended church regularly. Uh, and, you know, I'm not a person that believes that your acts or what you do here on earth are going to get you saved and into heaven or um, get you healed. But, uh, you know, why, why didn't my dad get healed? I know another um, young lady here recently that uh, just passed away and man it's again she just lived a life of faith and if anybody were to get healed that i know personally or know of personally you think you think that those two examples would be good examples of of people that god would be like doing it i'm going to do it they will be healed but it didn't happen they both passed away so yeah it is it's it's tough it so is. You, you know, at me as a Christian, that that doesn't waver. My faith isn't wavering because it didn't happen, but it leaves a person questioning. Saying my dad would say, "A person, a person would, uh, <laughs> a person could," uh, but yeah, it leaves a person wondering why didn't this particular person get healed? So it's a tough subject. A person could get pretty discouraged about that. A person could. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, unquote, Kerm Shetler. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I got to know Kerm some over the years through Steve and uh, just one of the friendliest souls. And, uh, yeah. and he's missed. He really is missed. So we are, we're just going to dig in a little bit into the question of why we don't always see healing when we ask God for it. And uh, I'm sorry to say that some of the answers are a little tough. Okay. Um, one of my favorite authors is uh, a writer named Donald Miller. And, and he opened one of his books by sharing a story about when he was complaining about how difficult life was. And someone told him, well, that's, that's just reality. 
And Donald said, well, I don't like reality. Reality stinks. Yeah. And another friend spoke up and said, well, Donald, reality is like a fine wine. It will not appeal to children. <laughs> and I think, I think we all kind of like that gets us in the heart. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, man. <laughs> mm. uh, I don't know. It's like reality. But this is real talk with yep. Aaron and Steve. Yep. So here we go. What's going on? Well, I'm, I'm going to start off by saying that, that uh, I do believe in healing. And I pray for healing. And I could tell you two or three stories about dramatic things that I've seen in my life. Uh, but again, like my percentage of healings that occurred because I prayed, my percentage is pretty low. Yeah. It's also higher than zero. Yeah. And uh, 100% of the prayers you don't pray won't get answered. I don't even know if that sentence made sense. Did that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, if, yeah, I get it. That's a, that's a starting point. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep praying for healing um, and let God decide uh, who gets to be healed and who doesn't. It's pretty sticky to say, uh, well, I'm... I, I, well, I would never say, well, I'm so good. I deserve to be yeah, healed. Yeah. Like, how good do you have to be in order to deserve to be healed? Yeah. So that's a that's a sticky, sure. sticky way of looking at it and a tricky path to go down. But a couple of thoughts. Um, sometimes, and this uh, comes from a story in, in the Gospel of Mark, uh, where Jesus actually goes to his hometown, okay. where he, I, I would assume he really cared about those people. But we're told that he couldn't heal very many people because of their lack of faith. Yeah. And in the book of in the book of Luke, we even see that when he made that visit to his hometown, people were so upset at him that they tried to drag him out of town and throw him off a cliff. <laughs> that wasn't uh, the welcome wagon, huh? <laughs> not not the welcome wagon. And that would never happen in Sigourney. Um, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're nice around here. But what what uh, what kind of atmosphere do we have uh, in our community, in our in our lives, in our own heart? Um, is it an atmosphere of well, Jesus, if you don't perform for me, I'm going to chuck you off a cliff? And uh, we maybe just shouldn't expect a lot of a lot of healings in an atmosphere of of doubt and entitlement. Sure, um, I understand that. Yeah. Now. That gets pretty dicey, too. I don't think it's a good idea to pray for somebody, and when they don't get healed, to tell them, well, you didn't have enough faith. Because there are some other things going on. Mm -hmm. Should we look at some of those? Sure, let's do it. All right, well, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 17, we've got a situation where uh, Jesus isn't around, but his disciples are trying to cast a demon out of a little boy. Mm -hmm. And they can't do it. And Jesus comes along, and guess what? He just spent all night up on the mountaintop praying. And so he cast the demon out, and then the disciples come to him and say, Hey, why, why couldn't we perform this healing miracle? And Jesus said about, about the demon, Well, this kind only comes out through prayer and, uh, and fasting. Okay. Ooh. Well, who here likes to fast? <laughs> Uh, how many of us fast on a regular basis? Uh, Not many. But, yeah, and honestly, I, I don't fast very often. Mm -hmm. uh, I often will select one week towards the beginning of the year where I'll fast for a couple of days. Okay. But I am, I am no hero of the faith in regards to fasting. And uh, so maybe I need to take that into consideration. Okay. Um, Kind of along with that, uh, many of us have been taught that we, if we pray in Jesus' name, that we'll see miracles happen. And so we kind of tack the words in Jesus' name onto the end of our prayers. Is that the, is that the magic recipe to, to make things happen? Ooh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think we're on really, really dangerous ground when we start to think that that there's some kind of magic recipe. Yeah, yeah. And and that we can say the right words and get God to do something. 
Sure. Um, that's that's bordering on blasphemous, actually. Sure. Like, yeah. I, and and it's it's magic, really. It's mm-hmm. it's more like witchcraft to think. Sure. If I say the magic words, then God has to yeah. do the thing that I want. And uh, so you're saying I can't just pray whatever that I uh, want selfishly and put in Jesus name at the end of it. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> it is real talk, Steve. So <laughs> I hate to be the one to break it to you, but no. Ah, oh, darn it. So what, what does in praying in Jesus name mean then? And I've always thought of it as being um, like, what if, what if you had a bank account and you had permission to stamp Jesus signature on your checks. Yes. <laughs> like I'm I'm cashing this check in Jesus name. Like his name is on my account. So what I wonder sometimes is if I really haven't disciplined myself to a life of prayer mm-hmm. and regular fasting, how much is in my bank account? Yep. So again, not to kick myself down or not to kick you down and say, well, you didn't get the healing for your loved one because you just stink at prayer. <laughs> That's not really where I want to go. Yeah. But I think since it's real talk, yeah, uh, we need to we need to consider, um, you know, if how how deeply am I really connecting with God on a daily basis, and uh, do I have permission to use His signature? On my on my bank account, so to speak. Yeah, it's good so, stuff. So that's something. Um, now the final two may even get more tough. Okay, but it is real talk. Yeah. In uh, in the book of Second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes to his friends, and he tells them about an experience that he had uh, that he refers to as a thorn in his flesh. He said, "I had a thorn mm-hmm. in my flesh." And we're not sure exactly what that was. Yep. He also calls it a messenger from Satan. So was it just the guy next door that was really annoying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My neighbor sure is a messenger from Satan. <laughs> he brings his dog over into my yard, doesn't <laughs> clean up after. He's a real thorn in my flesh. Um, was so yeah. Was it was it a, a demonic spirit or? Uh, a person who just really attacked him all the time, or was it an illness? Uh, mm-hmm. Some Bible scholars think that Paul had an ongoing problem with his eyesight. Okay. And uh, so there's some clues about that that we pick up on. So maybe he had a recurring uh, eyesight problem that was, you know, it was just a, a bummer for him. So he says, I prayed three times and asked asked God to take this away from me. But instead of taking it away from me, he said to me, my strength is made perfect in your weakness and my grace is sufficient for you. Okay. So it looks to me like sometimes God answers our prayer for healing in that way by saying, you're not going to be healed. Your loved one is not going to be healed. But in some other way, the goodness of God is going to be shown in the world through this situation. Okay. So kind of sorting these out and figuring out what's what's the case in this scenario, that's tricky. Yeah. And it's a case-by-case thing. Yep. And we'll go... I, I love to go back to that story from Matthew chapter 17 where the disciples can't cast the demon out of their out of this little boy and they go back to Jesus and ask why couldn't we cast it out so they prayed they didn't see a miracle but instead of getting frustrated and quitting they go and ask Jesus a question and that just reminds me of a story uh Steve you probably friend remember our friend Gary from church yeah. Um, Gary yep. had Gary had lung trouble, and for three or four or five years, we prayed for Gary almost every every week or every month. Oh God, please heal Gary's lungs, because he had to walk around with uh, oxygen, and uh, it was just a pain for him, right? Sure. And we prayed over, and we had faith, and we said in Jesus' name, and all this stuff, and Gary's lungs didn't get better. 
And then one day, Gary's doctor retired and he got a new doctor. Some young whippersnapper straight out of the university <laughs> who said, Gary, I'd like to look at your lo- at, at your heart. Well, that's dumb. I've got a problem with my lungs. What do you want to yeah. look at my heart for? Well, they went ahead and did a scan of his heart and found a tiny pinhole in his heart. Okay. Did a quick surgery. Fixed fixed the hole in his heart. Okay. Hasn't been on oxygen since. Yeah. (laughs) So for all these years, we were praying, oh, God, heal Gary's lungs. And there's nothing wrong with Gary's lungs. Yeah. Did we ever stop and pray and ask God, hey, are are we barking up the wrong tree here? Sure. So that, that memory has just stuck in my mind as, as a reminder when I don't see the answer to my prayer that I hoped for, maybe I ought to go back and check with God and see, am I even praying for the right thing here? Mm-hmm. So uh, I got one more thing. All this, right. this might be the toughest one of all. All right. I'm, yeah, you see, I'm a person that I would rather be you be real and hit the tough stuff. I'm that type of person. I don't want. I don't need the fluffy, feel good stuff all the time. I, I like to get hit hard with stuff. So hit me. Okay. Sometimes, Steve, it's time to die. True. Oh, yeah. Then that that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks, but that's life. We've yeah. got a great story in our family. Our our daughter Abby was born and was about two weeks old and was lying on a a mat on the floor and her three-year-old sister was sitting next to her and, uh, you know, just playing with her a little bit and talking to her. And, and, uh, all of a sudden Melissa overhears the older girl say to her two week old sister, someday, Abby, you're going to die. We're all going to (laughs) die. Welcome to the world, kid. (laughs) Get ready to die. Uh, but, but seriously, uh, and we all know this. Yeah. Someday we're all going to die, but, uh, here's, here's the truth about that. Okay. One more from our friend, the apostle Paul writing to his friends in Corinth again, his first letter to them. And he said to them, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Sure. So. Christ destroyed sin on the cross. Uh, he destroyed the, the curtain of separation between us and God. Uh, he destroyed Satan's power. Uh, he took care of a lot of things. But the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And so for any of us to experience resurrection from the dead and eternal life, mm-hmm. we're going to need to die. Yes. We do have hope, though. We have a promise from God of eternal life if we'll put our trust in him, if we'll accept his forgiveness. And so we, we uh, you lost your dad. Um, my dad's 75 now. My mom's 73, I think. And so that's, you know, that's something I'm starting to think about a little bit more. My wife's parents are getting into their upper 70s. And how old's, how old's your mom by now? Is she 70? Her birthday comes up in December. 75? She'll be 75? 75 or 76? Sorry, Mom. I know you watch this every week. (laughs) (laughs) But that's. And I'm put, being put on the spot, and I can't think of how old are you, uh, how old you are. Mid 70s. Real real talk, where we put Steve on the spot. (laughs) How old? Yeah. Next week, we're going to ask Steve how old somebody else in the family is. <laughs> you know. When was your anniversary, Steve? Uh, my anniversary is actually coming up. Uh, let's see here. My mom is going to be 77. 77. 77 years young. Yes. Ah, uh, well. I have a calendar in front of me that has every, all the important dates on it. So we're, so. we're starting to think about these things yes. at our age. With our parents, uh, and then another twenty years, it'll sure. be us yeah. starting to think about about these things. But we have we have a promise from God of eternal life, and and this God God likes to be real too. So He's telling you straight up, death is a reality.
but it is also an enemy that will be destroyed when you receive resurrection from the dead if you've put his faith in the uh, your faith in the blood of Jesus. So we get to end on a positive note. Yeah. So my friends, our encouragement to you, keep praying for healing when a loved one is, is sick or in pain or struggling with uh, kind of the mental illness department too, depression sure. and anxiety and bipolar. And that stuff is every bit as real as uh, losing an arm uh, or having cancer. So whatever it is that you're praying for, keep praying, um, but also keep listening to God about what he is up to and what he is doing in the situation. Because uh, it might be healing. It might be something else. But at the end of this life, there is a resurrection. And so we've got hope. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that was the thing. It's like, you know, I, I was upset emotionally that my dad died. Um, and, and the, the other story I was talking about at the beginning, the young lady passing away here recently as well. It's like, you know, you know, you, although you don't want them to die, you don't, you'd rather have them here on earth with you. Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, in your flesh, selfishly is what I'm trying to say. That was the word I'm looking for. But, you know, in the, at least those two cases, they went on to heaven they they had accepted jesus as their savior and you know where they went for eternity so yeah that is the good thing and you know we want that to be the good thing for you too especially if you're watching uh that uh, salvation message is in there uh to accept jesus and you know where you're going for eternity and then you don't have to worry about anything at all so uh i think i think we're about ready to wrap up here steve yeah it's been real but it's been good. Um, come back and join us again next week on Real Talk with Aaron and Steve. Uh, give us a like. Give us a share. Leave us a comment. Let us know uh, if you've got a topic that you're interested in hearing us cover. Something real that nobody's talking about out there. And we'll give it a stab. All right. Sounds good. That's uh, Aaron and Steve with Real Talk here on Steve Shuttler Media.